Welcome, in front of me is a Motorola Razr 50 Ultra and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So let's start off by opening up our settings. And from here I'm gonna begin with the personalization uh, option right here which allows you to personalize a bunch of different things about your device. So we have things like themes in here, so pre-made ones, uh, we have fonts, icon shapes, colors. And this is a pretty neat one. And now when you set a, selecting a wallpaper, you also have the option to have these colors be selected based on your wallpaper, which might be a better option. But still, if you want to have it set by you, some specific color that isn't uh, related to your wallpaper, you can do so right here. Then we also have the unlock screen and uh, external display options right here, along with uh, dark mode for some reason and the sound which oh, that would include ringtones I actually didn't know that um, so yeah you can go over this customize it now unfortunately there is no uh, for instance on fingerprint animation in here as we do have the side mounted one on different devices Motorola specifically when you have a under display one you can also choose animations in here now going back to the main settings page we can now also go into the external display which allows you to again uh, customize that as well with different uh, layout, well, not layouts, but different like uh, wallpapers on the front. And now we have some razor tips. So I guess this is just an instruction section. Let's ignore that. We have panels. So here you can add the panels. Now there's a bunch of them already added uh, by default. So you can remove some of them that you don't find useful. Uh, interestingly enough, we have things like Spotify that you can add on here. Kind of curious how that looks like. So let's close it up. Oh, I don't have internet probably would help if I connected to something. Nope. Oh, there we go. So I am supposedly connected now. Ah, and there we go. Okay, so I would need to actually sign in right now, so I'm not signed in, uh, but you can kind of have a, a look at how that looks like by default. In any case, uh, let's continue on. So in here we also have the display font and size along with uh, the call settings, uh, app settings, because we do have an app page on there. Sorry for that. Let's just move it a little bit further down. Um, music player. So this would be separate, obviously, from Spotify. And this is just a theme for it. Uh, we actually have a decent amount of themes that look pretty good. Now, funny enough, I think this one specifically uh, ties in with the actual camera. So I think this one would actually show... Yep, there we go, so you can see it right now. Uh, though, obviously, this one has a little bit less of a camera blending thing. So yeah, there are interesting themes for music right here. And creator toolkit, so obviously this kind of doesn't really apply to most people. So anyway, um, continuing on, let's move over to the display section. And here we have uh, the dark mode that you can enable, but you also have the dark mode settings if you tap on a text that allows you to select it so it turns on and off on a schedule uh, or from sunset to sunrise. Now moving further down, we have display refresh rate, which is set to high, but we also have the standard, which will give you better battery life, but just looks a bit choppier. Now high right here is 165 hertz, and this is, I believe, LTPO display, so it should drop below 60 if I'm correct. Um, so both of those options should give you a better battery life um, than running it obviously at permanent like 165 or 60 in general. Um, and if you don't see much of a difference between these two, obviously, in this case, just select 60. This will be a better, for, a better for your battery life. Now, scrolling a little bit further down, we have... Where do we have it? I'm looking for the colors. Oh, there we go. I actually missed it. So here we have the saturation of your display. By default, almost every phone is set to vivid, which I personally find it to be overdone, and I myself like to select it on the natural. It tones down the colors a little bit, makes them look more realistic. And that's kind of what I prefer. Now, obviously, this option right here, whichever one you choose, uh, choose, it's completely up to preference. So, which one ever, whichever one you want, that's the one you want to select. Uh, one thing that I will point out, though, is when, for instance, uh, having this kind of thing selected, and you're editing your photos on your phone, 
This will impact uh, how the photos will turn out on other people's phones. So if you're editing it for Instagram, you might want to have the more realistic kind of approach uh, on how the colors should be represented. Uh, as for instance, you're looking already at a saturated image um, and you want your colors to be saturated, but someone else is using just kind of like you know, crappy LCD display, uh, then it will look more blend to them. While on your saturated display, it looked good, but not as it would look when it's color correct. Uh, so just kind of wanted to point that out. Anyway, um, and here we also have a couple of things like the three finger screenshot if you want to utilize it. I believe that is actually enabled by default. Yep, it is. So uh, there's nothing to enable, but you can utilize it by just doing this or not. Come on, you're enabled. Oh, it's a finger not swipe down but hold that's new okay um let's go back to the main settings page and next we're going to go into the gestures so here we have things like the uh, navigation uh, mode for your phone i personally like to use the gesture navigation uh, as it just looks clean and it's much more convenient for at least for me to use it now under the settings we also have the ability to hide the bar at the bottom to give you even cleaner look so that's pretty good and also the swipe assistant right here or invoke the swipe assistant or however they want to describe it uh, i like to turn that off as it is inconvenient to kind of like launch it like this and i don't use it at all so i just don't care for it so you can turn it off in here now going back to the gestures we also have the sidebar which is turned off by default uh, but it gives you the ability to have a sidebar now when enabled it will bring this kind of like a bar right here which is barely visible on the camera uh, so here you just want to kind of swipe and it brings up your applications so these are ones that are added by default you can also tap right here on this little grid this will show you all installed applications and you also have the settings for it so you can add applications to the bar itself if you want to uh, i do want to point out i do like the bar itself uh, but being completely honest, it is kind of working in a wonky way right now, at least the last time I checked it, which was with the G85 uh, Motorola. So let's see if it works better now. So if you tap on an application, it should open it up in a pop-up view. Okay, that worked. Let's try something else. Split screen. Pop-up view. And it doesn't work. So this is uh, one limitation. It actually only allows you to use two applications at the same time. So you can have one full screen and one pop-up or two split screens. Uh, but even though it allows you to have a uh, pop-up window like this, it won't allow you to have the si split screen along with the pop-up window, which for instance, uh, my five-year-old phone allows me to do so with less RAM. And just to kind of showcase this, uh, you can do something to kind of try to to cheese this so right now it's one application with a pop-up being minimized and i'm gonna add something like a calculator which can split screen you can still see there is the pop-up but if i try to open it up yoink nope um so it won't let me use it like i said uh pretty cool that they implemented the sidebar as i do like the sidebar in itself i just hoped that they would have done a little bit more to make it more usable uh, as at this point it's just a it's a glorified split screen launcher nothing really special right here uh, but this phone is capable of obviously doing more with it so there's a chance that motorola will uh, put out some updates that will make it more usable and give you more versatility with it which would be obviously a great improvement now, anyway, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.